I think all of Coast Guard aviation has, has benefited from the from the flying techniques here at Hitchcock. First tour, we were still a relative unknown within aviation. So you had a small group of folks that had Hitron experience, just a handful at that point when I was here. And so a lot of the things we were doing, we were working at a speed that was beyond what policy and procedures in the Coast Guard could keep up with. And we had a civilian flight manual. Um, a lot of the things that were in our air operations manual uh, really didn't address the mission that we were flying. And so one of the things I saw first tour was getting change done uh, for the unit was difficult and challenging. But as I came back for my second tour, a lot of the duty standing pilots that I had deployed with and flown had now gone on and were doing you know, significant staff jobs at area commands, uh, at program elements at headquarters, uh, at Mobile. And so you had, you had advocates now at that level, you had folks that understood what this mission demanded. And so the speed of change and keeping up was, had gotten much easier. Likewise, you know, the rest of aviation as changes to policies and procedures came forward. Now you had someone on the staff saying, wait a minute, this might impact Hitron and how they do their mission. Before, uh, that didn't happen as often. So I think that was a big notable change for us as it became easier for, I think, the rest of Coast Guard to almost fully understand what our needs were down here and really get to a point where uh, making sure these crews can do their missions that are armed with the right policies and procedures uh, was, much, uh, was much better the second time around. Not only has it been extremely successful in the war on drugs, but it has made our legacy search and rescue mission safer as well. It just took someone saying, we need to do this. And then it took finding the right group of folks that weren't afraid to try it.